And it, it should be very concerning to people that an administration or people in an administration, people serving in government who are provided classified information, who are given clearance in the trust of the United States government, misused, mishandled, and potentially did some very, very bad things with classified information. White House spokesman Sean Spicer pushing back on reporters' questions about the Trump campaign in Russia, saying the real focus should be on the Obama administration's leak of classified information about the Trump transition. And it's time now for our Sunday group, Laura Ingram, editor of Life Z and a Fox News political analyst, Gerald Seib from the Wall Street Journal, Julie Pace, who covers the White House for the Associated Press, and former National Security Council staffer Jillian Turner. Well, Laura, the president and his team dug in deeper this week on this whole Russia scandal, and their argument now is that the Obama administration surveilled the Trump team and then spread that classified information for political purposes. Is this helping or hurting the White House? Well, I think uh, they know that as long as this investigation goes on, the harder it is for them to push on a number of fronts their domestic agenda, foreign policy, because I think a lot of folks do believe that the Russia focus is meant in part to delegitimize the presidency of Donald Trump. So when Sean Spicer makes that point, I, th I think he's right. If, if Grassley's letter that he sent, Charles Grassley sent a letter uh, a few days ago. Um, Senator Grassley. Yeah, Senator Grassley, um, who you don't want to tangle with. When he, when he, when he, it's like a dog on a bone when he gets on an issue. He sent a letter um, to uh, the FBI about Andrew McCabe, who's the number two uh, person at the FBI. Andrew McCabe's wife uh, received $700,000 in political contributions arranged and facilitated by none other than Clinton friend uh, Terry McAuliffe. Uh, and his concern uh, is that all documents better pre be preserved, all communications better be turned over about what Andrew McCabe knew and when he knew it about the unmasking of individuals who were surveilled during the Trump transition or during the Trump campaign. If it turns out at the end of all of this that the FBI and our intelligence agencies have turned into partisan political operations with an agenda, then Republicans and Democrats should be very concerned. If it all turns out this is just a routine investigation, the Trump administration will have egg on its face. But I have a feeling that we're going to find out a lot more about who was involved in the unmasking and who, uh, who had an agenda. Well, speaking about finding out a lot more, Julie, it was Devin Nunes, the chair of the House Intelligence Committee, who indicated that he got information about surveillance and unmasking from an outsider. Take a look. The sources and methods are, are kept uh, very confidential. Uh, we, we invite whistleblowers to come forward. You have to go to the White House to brief them. Shouldn't they be briefing you? Shouldn't the administration be briefing you? The administration, I don't think, is aware of this, so I want to make sure that I go over there and tell them what I know. Because it, it involves them. But as the week went on, it became clear that officials at the president's own National Security Council inside the White House were deeply involved in this, which raises the question, as to are the president and his team and Devin Nunes all working together to protect Trump. And I think it's important to note that even before Nunes came out and said he had received this new information, there were officials in the White House that were telling reporters, you should really be focused on this issue of improper unmasking. This is where we think the real story is. And then suddenly Devin Nunes shows up and says he's received information on exactly that topic. Look, if there is improper, unmask, improper unmasking of Trump officials for political reasons... Say unmasking means identification. Basically, that there was, there was surveillance of, of people that may have not even been an American. It may have been foreigners. In fact, that's what it's thought. And they're talking about Americans, and they're supposed to say American person one, American person two. If it becomes clear American person one is Donald Trump, you're not supposed to say that. You're not supposed to say that, though, if you talk to intelligence professionals, they say when you are talking about someone like the president or the president's national security advisor, their identity becomes almost impossible to reveal just based on the nature of the conversations. If there was improper handling of classified information, if it was spread improperly throughout the government, that's a real concern. But the White House and Nunes aren't doing themselves any favors when they try to cover up how this information is getting into the House intelligence chairman's hands. Jillian, as someone who worked in the National Security Council, both in the Bush 43 administration and in the Obama administration, how unusual for officials in the National Security Council to get involved in such a partisan 
actively partisan issue. And also for the former National Security Advisor, Michael Flynn, to seek immunity from criminal prosecution in return for testifying. And, and, and along those lines, I want to point out, here's what Mr. Flynn and Donald Trump said during the campaign about the fact that Clinton campaign officials got immunity in the email investigation. Here it is. When you are given immunity, that means that you've probably committed a crime. And if you're not guilty of a crime, what do you need immunity for, right? And now, President Trump is supporting immunity for Michael Flynn. Yes, um, which the whole situation, the whole scenario is highly unusual. But I would say this, that this story, especially with Nunes' involvement, is like an onion where every day we're peeling back more and more layers. And we could kind of go back and forth for infinity on who checked into the White House when and when they left and who talked to who. But at the core of the story remains two issues, two national security issues. One is um, the leaking of classified information to include the surveillance issue. The other is potential Russian attempted interference in the United States general election. Now, both of these issues are very more important than the politics surrounding them, by which I mean they both have uh, implications for American national defense. And by the way, they both span two presidential administrations at this point. People will push back and say, but there's no evidence of collusion between the Trump campaign team and Russia in the, in the general election. And that's fine and that's true. But I actually argue that that makes an investigation, a really thorough investigation about Russian efforts more important because it means that whatever they were able to, wherever they were able to get to, anything they achieved, they did on their own. Isn't that more compelling? Well, it, we don't know that. I mean, that's one of the things. And as, as FBI Director Comey said in the House hearing, he said that he, they are currently investigating Russia and also the possibility of Trump campaign involvement. Jerry, you and I have covered a lot of scandals, too many scandals in this town. What stands out for you about this one? Well, never a scandal like this. I mean, this is singular. I've never seen anything like this. Uh, I think what stands out is the fact that you have basic in, uh, core intelligence issues being discussed so publicly and so openly. I'm not sure that's in anybody's best interest. And I'm not sure it's in the White House interest to have it go on uh, in, for infinity. I wonder if the White House wouldn't be better served if the, everybody could just turn down the volume and figure out how we're going to get to the bottom of both of these questions, surveillance and Russia and meddling. And I think the one thing that happened this week was he got a glimpse that maybe there's one place where that can happen, and that's the Senate Intelligence Committee, where you had you know, two senators, Senator Burr on the Republican side and Senator Warner on the Democratic the side. Two chairs. The two chairs, the chair and the ranking member, come out, have a press conference, and then, and then an initial hearing in which they look like adults, responsible adults, actual bipartisan effort that might answer some of these questions in a way that's credible and believable and that maybe will make this all go away eventually. 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 The emphasis is on the word eventually. All right, we have to take a break here.